thanks to your feedback and our collaboration with the legendary Tom Oberheim, we are proud to announce the latest version of OBE, which sports several enhancements, including PC compatibility and a full endorsement from the man himself. On the interface front, it is no longer necessary to type in a percentage value for the interface size. Now all you have to do is drag the interface size via the bottom right marker here. Secondly is a new vintage knob. But before we get to that, it's worth mentioning that the detune knob is decidedly less raucous than the original OBE. Essentially, the detune function detunes each of the SEMS oscillators very slightly so that they have their own distinct tuning discrepancies. This then works with the vintage knob, which decalibrates a raft of parameters to create predictable differences between each SEM which remain consistent. This is exactly the same behaviour you would get on a hardware 8 voice, where the calibration differences do exist between each SEM. Why two separate controls? Well, there are times when you might want to keep the precision of tightly tuned SEMs, but have the envelopes slightly decalibrated, or vice versa. The eagle-eyed of you will have noticed the A440 reference tone is not immediately apparent. However, it's still there, tucked away as part of the global tune display. Talking of tucked away, another small enhancement we've made is when moving controls with the shift button held down on your QWERTY keyboard, you now get very fine control over any changes. Next, we've added a rather lovely reverb, which can take an average synth sound and make it sound delicious. By way of an example, let's start with a very basic patch with a simple sawtooth waveform on VCO1. Then click the tab to reveal the sequencer and effects controls. Turn on the effects and head over to the reverb, where we see a comprehensive set of controls, including the ability to apply reverb to just the upper or lower SEMs, or both. We also have five presets, ranging from a short slapback to a huge reverb and these provide a really good starting point for you to hone in on exactly what you want. So let's mix the reverb with our simple saw patch. And alter the reverb size. Change the decay time. and the pre-delay. Now let's use the modulation frequency and depth controls to add some movement to that reverb tail. Now it's nice and big, we can use the low pass or high pass filter knob to either filter out the high frequencies or the low frequencies.
And of course, we can still use the delay, which remains unchanged. While we're in this section though, we have a couple of changes in the sequencer section that we think you're going to like. Firstly, we can zoom in on the sequencer via the, wait for it, zoom button. Secondly, the scale modes can be controlled by MIDI CCs. For example, you could have a sequence like this in C major. But by programming in the correct CC number for the scale, you could change that to say C minor at the press of a button. Last but not least, we have a new drum mode, which you can activate by pressing Alt and D on your QWERTY keyboard. In this mode, each SEM is assigned to, and triggered by, playing a specific key on your keyboard. SEM1 is assigned to C2. SEM2 is assigned to C sharp 2. SEM3 is assigned to D2, and so on until you hit G. By setting up different percussive sounds on each SEM, you can then play those keys and record that pattern into your door. To leave drum mode, all you have to do is press Alt and D once again. <laughs> 